When I was in middle school, I loved basketball. I was the point guard and my basketball coach, he was also the English teacher and he always talked about how fast I was. And I would always finish my laps around the basketball court while everyone else is still huffing and puffing. <laughs> and he was also the track coach and I was in sixth grade, so we couldn't really join track yet. And he signed me up for my first 5K. And was like, I'm going to take you to a first 5K on Saturday. Me not knowing what that is, my mom prepared me this huge breakfast. I had like pancakes, bacon, and eggs. She was so proud of me. You don't eat that before you run. I found the hard way at the end. I got sick, but I felt so great, and I did really good for my age. Like I was in like top 10 of the finishers and at my young age. It was a small race, but it still felt great. <laughs> So my symptoms were probably at the end of middle school, um, and it was just like headaches, and not only just headaches, you would, I call them floaters, what you would see is like random dots in your vision, and they just kind of like wiggled around, so instead of seeing a clear picture like you would see on a TV, think of like you had too much static in the background, and that's all you saw. Um, then it would turn into like looking through a pinhole because that's the everything around your eye was just darkened out. And then you just see in a tunnel and then it would completely go out. Um, so that kept getting severe. Um, it would impact my life where I didn't want to do much. I would just want to be in a closed room and go to sleep. But then if I ran, it made me feel better. The endorphins from running, I never had any symptoms. I was like, you're, I didn't know you're not supposed to run with Chiari malformation. I was never told because I'm from West Virginia. They didn't do much details with me on it. I didn't find out until I started joining Facebook groups. Facebook groups are more normal now. That's when I was talking to my neurosurgeon and they told me I needed to have surgery. And that's when I reached out to groups. And then they were telling me that I would have to um, stop running completely, that I'm crazy for running. Um, that the impact of running impacts my skull and my uh, nerve system. So your brain is like this and your spine's down here and my brain sloped underneath. So it's pressing on all the nerves and just impacting of that run can cause more damage. Um, so that's why they tell you you're not supposed to run, but it made me feel much, so much better. I didn't have headaches when I ran. Um, I felt like normal. So that's why I continue to run. And then I was told at my pre-surgery and like here in Savannah, I finally found a new neurosurgeon and that's when we scheduled surgery. And he was telling me there's not a likelihood of me going back to running. When I was told this, I immediately signed up for every race. So every two weeks I had a race. Um, my husband was just going to kill me because I was gone every weekend because I would travel to I would go to Charleston around the Cooper Bridge run I went to Rivergate in Florida to run that race um, I went to Peachtree after and the race well after surgery but before that I had love chocolate here local and that's where I got the time qualifier time but I just scheduled every race I could because I was like this is going to be it I don't know what's going to happen to my future, but as well as get my name on there, let's go. <laughs> Love chocolate here, local, um, from Dan Pavlin's Endurance Race Service. I ran the half, and I the qualifying time for me was supposed to be 1.30, and I think, I believe, I can't remember, it's 1.27 I got for that half, which qualified me in time for it. This would be, honestly, my second marathon. So that would be an issue, um, trying to get the mental game. You also were at sea level. So we're used to the flatland here. And I heard there's about four bridges that we have to go through over in New York on this race. So the hill's going to be a little challenge. Um, even though I'm from West Virginia, I loved hills back then. It's a little different now that my body got used to this flat ground. Would love just to finish. Um, New York is one of those runs that you're not going to win it. You're not going to be in top. Um, it's a world marathon, so therefore it's big. Um, you have so much crowd. It's so busy. So to get around people to even get in the pace that you usually are is going to be hard. So finishing, being there in that atmosphere, being there from West Virginia is just a big thing right there. It's just to run New York is amazing and to time qualified. That's 
That's love right there.